All right, so let's get started. And Eric, it seems like you are playing I'm Still Here. Let's see what you got here. All right, so man, that intro, man, honestly, the intro was great. You did that intro great. There's not a lot I would change on that intro. Now, I know you're you're wanting me to give you ideas, but just to let you know, that intro was great. Um, so nothing much to do there. Um, let's just listen to, now here is, I'm gonna bring it up in Spotify. Here's the song that you're doing still here. Let's listen to that one more time. Now let me listen to hers. Okay, so, okay, now let me listen to yours again, and I'm going to just kind of give you some tips, because like I said, the intro is great, but maybe there's some little things you can maybe add to it. So let me see here. All right, so that first, that chord on the C, that chord on the C, it has an F in it. Uh, in the record, it has a G. Now, you don't have to do it that way, and let me see, let me see. See right there, that chord right there. See how you're spanning, okay, so there you're spanning a D to a C to an F, so you're doing this. So you're going... Okay, now, and there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with this chord here, um, but the absence, um, the absence of a clear third, uh, the third grounds the chord. So uh, uh, the third could be either this F sharp, right? But uh, on the record, I'm not hearing an F either, so it may be a G. Okay, so let's hear that on the record. See, see how it sounds here. Okay. See, so they didn't. That, they're doing that G. So now I still don't like that distance here between the G and the. So this, this you have the problem of the space. So one thing you could do to fill up that space. Um, again, I wouldn't necessarily play the F because the G's intended. So I would go. This would be a great chord to use there. So now you're filling up the space here, see? So there's not as much gap between the notes. So you have the F sharp, C, and D. So it would sound like this. Okay, so that would work. Or like that. And I, you notice I'm not putting in the B flat in there because some people would do that. But I, that see, that sounds a lot different than than that, so that's why I would, okay, that's why I like that one. All right, so that's what I would add for that one chord there. All right, let's keep on going. Okay, so, all right, so what you're doing there, and then, that's exactly what the record did too, so that's perfect. And then after that, so that part, I don't have anything I would fix there. Um, Okay, so right there, let's change that. So, um, and then instead of instead of having just two notes there, let's use uh, let's use a spread in triad. So let's use a B, G sharp, and a D. Okay, so it'll sound like this, and take take off the sustain. Right, so that's that. That would be the voicing there, right? Okay, so that's how I would do that. So, see, because I like the way that diminished chord sounds, that triad in the left hand with everything else. Um, let me see again. Yeah, see, so you're playing it with the B alone. So adding that triad gives it a little bit more, a little bit more body. I like how you did that because it, you sustained it, even though I do it faster in the record. I like the way you did it um, because it's, it, it sounds like it resolves very easily. 
because if you're playing this as a solo, you know, the timing is up to you. It's your intro. So you can kind of slow down there. So I like how you did that. It sounds more resolved. So that part there, uh, let's hear that. Yeah, see that part, you do it. You did that part exactly. Um, maybe, uh, what kind of suggestions can we give you on that? Maybe, um, see that this is a nice voicing right here. Okay. There's another voicing that you can use. Um, okay, so, so something like that. Okay, so in that one we had this instead of you could go. All right, so that one you have this C A. Then we'll go to this E flat, C, and these are just suggestions, you don't have to use these. And a G, E flat, and then, right, that kind of a voicing there. And then, um, or, or how about um, something like that would work too, that, that, that bass kind of grounds that middle one. Um, but again, these are just all suggestions. You, you're, you're, clearly at an intermediate level so i'm just trying to give you ideas that um you could do that may um you know the color a little bit more yeah that sounds good um, yeah see that that sounds great yeah great no no suggestions i do have a suggestion though um, on a because there's there's three things I want to tell you about this song. The first one was just some little things you could do in the intro, but really, um, the other thing is when you start playing, yeah, here it is. So nice strings there. Okay, so you see that phrase right there? Okay, so um, before I talk about that, and by the way, um, you sound great. Um, I don't really have any major things for you to work on. I will say on the second part though, I think that the strings could be lowered a bit because the release on the strings, the time it's taking the, the strings to release, um, the chord is already on the next note, so it makes it sound a little muddy. And, and by the way, um, for everybody who's watching this, Every keyboardist needs to know where their um, the ADSR controls are on their keyboard and how to navigate those controls and how to work on that. In fact, I, I saw this really good blog, um, and I'll put something up on the screen hopefully, um, because on this uh, this really good blog kind of shows just the just the mechanics. Because everybody, all musicians should understand the con the mechanics of ADSR. Um, attack, decay, sustain, and release. And I like this graphic here because it kind of shows you from you hitting the note, right, which is the attack, uh, going on to when the note is released to release. And so on the strings, for instance, you've got a long release there, and, and you can shorten that release so that it's not getting in the way of chords coming after it. Um, again, that's one thing you do is, is adjust the attack and release. The other thing you do is lower the volume on the strings now but the other the main thing i wanted to, to say though was on this um on this actual phrase see that part there um that's 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 pretty much what uh, he does on the record so um i think that you would benefit eric from kind of moving on to that next level in the advanced where you're listening to how other guys are approaching this, like Mike Burrell, for instance, um, you know, when he plays this, I want, I want you to hear what he does because I think you're at the level where you could probably start incorporating uh, some of those things that he's doing. So if you're uh, like Eric, you're at that intermediate level and 
you know how to play it like the record, but you you want additional things to do. Um, what you need to do is see how other people deviate from the original. It, it doesn't help us to just do songs that um, are fancy songs, but we don't know we don't know where the original content came from. So because we know the, what the phrase sounds like, let's play the, what the phrase sounds like. Then I'm going to bring Mike Berea over. Then the Lord, he spared my life. Oh, yes, he did. Oof, nice chords, nice chords. All right, now let's hear what you, how you've interpreted that. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. So you did, you, you got the, you got the chords right on it. You got the chords right on it. So good job on that. And like I said, just, just, just lowering that string volume. I think it'll make it sound a little bit tighter. But you got the chords All right now. Let me hear how he colors this. <laughs> now that that's the part <laughs> that's the part it's a similar part that uses the same structure um, I think you can use that um, right there let me go let me revert, run a little bit from his grave right there right there we're gonna change that with this one right here That part, instead of, instead of going, instead of doing that, we're going to do, and I think that's what you did, I'm, I'm not sure, I was just kind of guessing. And then here, ah, see, let's do that, I like that one. So, so what we're going to do is, see, we're going to replace that with that. So, right? Then you go to this. Oh, I need it. Let me let me uh, remove this thing here. Okay, so we're gonna place what Mike did. Maybe I can move the screen here. Um, okay, so good. So instead of doing that, we're gonna do what Mike did. Instead, of, again, here's what Mike does. Let's try this one. Oof. All right. So, so, right. So that's a great, that's a great substitution to use to do that. Okay. So slowly, that's going to be. Okay. So that's going to be C, E, C, G, E flat, and then D and F to the C and E flat. Right, and then, so that'd be a E, a G, B e flat, C, E, E flat, F, G, F. And then, or, and then you go from here, and then you're gonna walk up to this B flat. So, um, so, so E, and then when you get to this, when you get to the A, hit a, a D and an F, and then just take these up a half step. So, and then from here, this is a sus voicing without the root, right? And then, and the only, only, only note you're moving is the F to the, F sharp to the F and the B to the, the B flat to the A. Okay, that's the same concept. That's the same concept of what you're doing. See that part here? That part here is the same as he did. 
you see, so so this is where improv takes it takes a, a life of, of its own because now you you kind of understanding the chordal structure, the chordal construct of what is going on. So this is the helpful thing. Uh, Eric, good job, man. This is this is real good. I'll go ahead and thank him in the comments. I love doing these where I can just kind of look at look at stuff. He's a solid player. Um, so definitely go ahead and look at it some. Uh, Mike Burrell stuff and try to see if you can add some of his stuff to your song.